Hey, my name is Mike, and this is a too long didn't read guide for the Stormwall blockade encounter in the Battle of Desaralor. Split your raid up between the two boats. On one boat is Sister Catherine, who frequently does an AoE to players near her. Avoid the lightning lines she spawns. Sometimes there's a batch of them, and sometimes they spawn one at a time. Crackling lightning is put on a random person and indicated by this gray swirly underneath you. Run away, as this will deal less damage the further away you are from the group. She puts a shield around herself and starts channeling on the boss. Damage her to break the shield and then quickly interrupt the channel. This channel increases the boss's energy by two every three seconds. If the boss gets to 100 energy at any point throughout this fight, he does a 15 second cast that kills everyone. Brother Joseph also does an AoE to players around him and puts a shield around himself and channels towards the boss. So break his shield and interrupt him quickly. He's put Sea Storm on random people, indicated by this blue arrow above your head and circle around your character. Move to the edge of the boat because you drop a circle on the ground when it expires. These circles will last for about 30 seconds. Joseph also spawns a tempting siren ad who flies to one side of the boat and channels on a random player. This player has a couple of seconds to run as far away from her as they can before they become seduced and unable to control their character. They'll start to walk towards the ad and if they get to her, get thrown off the boat. The rest of the players need to kill this ad before that happens. The circles on the ground slow your movement speed so if necessary, position yourself so you walk through them. Both of these mini bosses need to be killed around the same time because when one dies, their ghost starts giving the boss 5 energy every 2 seconds. This stops happening as soon as they're both dead. When they're both dead, click on the teleporter on the ship to get back to the boss. If you click this while one of the mini bosses is alive, he'll just get sent to the other boat. On Heroic, you need to make sure both mini bosses get to 50% health at the same time as well because upon reaching this amount of health they will swap which boat they're on. If one ship is without a boss for a couple of seconds it will start to get bombarded with gray circles until a boss gets on their boat and the other ship will just have two sets of mechanics to deal with. When you get back to the platform to fight Laminaria don't interrupt his catastrophic tides cast immediately. Interrupt it when it has about one second left to give yourself some mechanic free DPS time. This is also a good time to pop all of your offensive cooldowns. Once the boss becomes active avoid the gray swirlies that spawn on players from sea swell and the green pools that they create. This ability deals damage to anyone within 4 yards of you as well. My guild just had her melee stacked up and then her range stacked up and healed through the damage. If you can't do this, you'll want to spread out very loosely so you don't cover more of the platform than you need to. There will also be a gray circle that spawns on the platform. If no one soaks it, it'll do a raid-wide AoE and create green pools. Have as many people as you can soak this because the damage is split between all of them. Throughout the fight, a ranged player or healer will get a dot on them called Storm's Whale. When you get this, you need to immediately run over as many green pools as you can because you'll delete them from the platform. Try to always focus on either the left or right side of the the platform, ensuring you pay a little closer attention to melee so they have a place to stand. Do this quickly and then run as far away from the boss as you can. When the dot expires, you spawn an ad. These need to be slowed and killed quickly by ranged. Melee should help if needed if it gets close to the boss. If an ad reaches the boss, it'll start channeling 4 energy into him every 2 seconds. At a certain point in this fight, you'll start getting 2 ads spawning in quick succession. Make sure to focus them down. On Heroic, this is a bit different. Storm's Whale is cast only once at the start of the fight. Afterwards, when an ad dies, it'll drop a blue orb on the ground. Every 2 seconds that it's on the ground, the entire raid will get a stacking dot that does more damage per stack. Melee, make sure you're careful not to pick this up by accident. An assigned player needs to run over the orb and then they will get Storm's Whale. You don't need to pick up the orb right away. My guild sometimes waited until we had around 9 stacks so we can maximize how many green pools were being deleted. The boss's melee attacks will apply a stacking dot on the tank that also reduces movement speed by 2% per stack. Your priority is to swap when an ad has spawned and is close to the raid. Run over beside an ad and have a healer dispel your dot. Doing so will make the ad take more damage per stack that you had. The tanks in my guild had this happen at around 4 stacks. Other than that, just make sure someone is always in melee combat with Lamination or he'll do a lot of damage to distant players. And defensives are helpful for the Sea Swell AoE. That was a too long didn't read guide for the Stormwall blockade encounter. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and consider following me on Twitter. Thanks for watching and have a beautiful day.